that was the best qualifying I've ever witnessed in my entire life. And I've been watching Formula One since 1997. So this Brazilian Grand Prix is amazing. Before we start though, subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second, it really does help out the channel, and let's get started. I've put up this 2025 calendar based on how Brazil has been so far. We're gonna do Brazil every race next year, every race. <laughs> you honestly could, it's such a good track. And every time you go there, it gives you different results. And today's results, even crazier. Norris on pole, Russell in second, who Mercedes was nowhere this weekend. And Sonona in an RB in fourth. We also have a con in Sonona in third, a con in fourth, Lawson in fifth, Leclerc, Albon, Piastri, Alonso, Stroll, and then rounding out the rest of the field, Botas, Verstappen, Perez, Sainz, Gasly, Hamilton, Behrman, Colapinto, Hulkenberg, and Zhao. I'm impressed by Zhao how during all of this he's still able to finish absolutely last place. Uh, consistency is king with him. Okay, we're gonna go through all of this. We're going to start off with Q1. Zhao, Hulkenberg, Colapinto with a crash. Um, this is them going out at the start, the queuing up. Queuing up was a big thing this uh, qualifying session. Not only is there not a lot of time, you're in a time constraint here. You gotta get qualifying done at a certain amount of time because the, the track needs prep. All the team needs prep before the race. So there was a point in time where this was going on a little bit too long where they would have to cancel it because they need that time to get everything cinched up for the actual race, which is not too many hours. But this queuing thing was a big thing. Every time the session was red flagged, they went out here. Six red flags we had this uh, particular qualifying session, the most I've ever seen, personally. I've seen big accidents and lots of people go out for qualifying, but never this amount. Uh, this was the level of spray. This was rain level, I wanna say 2.5. At the very start of the Grand Prix, it was wet weather. It was completely wet. And I wanna say that it was really close to not even happening, which has never happened before. And I thought that would be pretty interesting if that did happen. Okay, so the first red flag. Oh, this is some of the action. This is uh, Russell and Sainz coming very close together, but this is Colapinto out in P17 pretty early on. He was absolutely destroyed, so downtrodden uh, when they interviewed him after, uh, after his crash. Uh, but really, he shouldn't be that upset. Uh, we had the lights of Sainz, Albon, Alonso, really, really great drivers. And Alonso's amazing in the rain. So, like, people that I wouldn't really say would be crashing out were getting it wrong. So, if Colin Pinto was feeling bad, just look to the rest of the grid and how, how the, what happened to them. People who are, who know what they're doing. Fernando Alonso is the most experienced driver in Formula One and he crashed out. So you really don't have anything to be, feel bad about Colapinto. You should do good in the race. Um, the only bad thing, and this is a note for the whole qualifying, because there were so many cars out and because they had to pile them up places and there's only one truck in certain areas and they were mostly all going out turn four. Uh, and turn one and turn 12 a little bit. They don't have the trucks to get everybody back to the grid to repair their cars. You will see people not start this race, 100%. And I suspect that it'll be the Williams. One, because they won't have enough parts to fix both cars. Two, Albon's gearbox was smashed. And three, as of one hour and 10 minutes into qualifying, Colapinto's car still did not make it back to the Williams garage. So that's a pretty big deal. Let's keep going though. Um, the rest of the field there, uh, we had uh, Behrman and Hamilton. So uh, weird to see Behrman out. He was actually pretty good this weekend. Hamilton just could not get it through. And he was asking his, his pit crew, why, what happened? Because he felt like it was a pretty good lap, but he was nearly two seconds down and the next person up. So uh, really not that good. What else did I have? It's very, very high. Pooling in 12 uh, turns four and 12 and 12. Four and 12 are where the rain is really affecting. That's where the, the water is washing across the track. Just before turn 12, it's kind of a downhill there. And as you break to come in there, that's where people are going along. Not necessarily crashing because there's lots of room there and there's actually a little runoff road, but you're going along into there. And in turn four, which is right after the second DRS zone, it is a long sweeping corner, very fast. And as soon, it kind of goes like this but as you go up on the track, it's off camber. So if you touch a little bit off over there, boom, you're gone, you're, you're gonna go way off. And then turn two was a lot of crashing as well. 
Uh, that's just if you get that uh, series of turn one, two, uh, three all kind of wrong there. So lots of crashing going on there as well. And not much improvement after the red flag for Colin Pinto. The rain did come down quite hard after that. So what else do we have here? Uh, and this is what it kind of looks like out on the track. So here's uh, turn four and turn 12 where the pooling is. This was the dry part of the track and this is the wet part of the track. This turned to complete inters later on in the qualifying. But as of there, that's what the track looked like. This was Q1 Norris was so close he was the second last car across the line and he just made it through he was so close to finishing p16 it is not funny it was down to the wire he was just lucky that the person across the track last was Zhou Guan Yu. as you can see he put up this uh, uh green time here and came absolutely last <laughs> so far down um, after that this was Sainz let's just go through Q, Q2, we have Gasly, Sainz with a crash, Perez, Verstappen, Botas. When Sainz crashed, where the red flag came out, there was not enough time for most of those people in that bottom, um, in that bottom five there to put in times, particularly Verstappen, Perez, and Gasly. They missed out on actually putting in a representative lap time. The time between the red flag or the the crash and the red flag was quite a long time. I don't think it would have really affected where it might have affected a little bit. It was hard to say. I don't think the yellows screwed up for Strappen's lap, so he wasn't getting one in. But really, it was where they were positioned in the pit grid. And if you can see, um, where did I have this here? You don't see any Red Bulls there. They start way down in the back of the grid because it's the opposite way around. Uh, Haas is up front here and way down at the very back is the Red Bulls. So that's why they're not very advantageous here. And it's because it's a counter, uh, it's a counterclockwise track. So they're always in the right, in the same direction on the grid. And this way they're not very, they're not very far up, which is bad. Science crash, a lot of these accidents are spinning around ones and rear ends hitting. So this, you can see where his rear right wheel is messed up. If you have that kind of damage in there, there's a pretty good chance that the um, that the drive shaft has been smashed. And if the drive shaft is smashed, it is directly linked to your gearbox. That's an immediate change. That's an immediate to the back of the grid. If you can get changed in time, this is all body work off, all floor off, engine almost out, rear uh, gearbox, rear wing, the whole thing, rear tires, rear axles, it's a big job. And not only when you do that, you have to readjust your brakes, make sure everything works properly there. So um, big, big job for anybody who has rear damage. So big thing for Verstappen, we don't know where he's actually gonna start. Uh, and I don't think I'll figure that out before this video is over because Verstappen has a five place grid penalty starting in P12. So he should be in 17th. But if Sainz starts from the starts from the pit lane, so that's 16. If Call of Pinto is already behind him, but then we have Stroll, Alonso, and Albon, that's three people ahead of him. That should give him three places back. So that that grid penalty should almost mean nothing. He would start in 13th, one place behind, and the only person in front of him would be Perez, who we would assume would let him by almost immediately. Uh, because they actually know what they're doing when it comes to strategy, unlike McLaren. So, uh, red flag timing slow. We went through that. Let's go through some of the other. The very end of this one the, uh, is when Stroll crashed. This is the, this is the red flag that messed up uh, that messed up Verstappen basically. Uh, and Stroll crashed, but not too hard. You can see where his impact was right here. This is the impact from Colapinto over here. So this is a very dangerous part of the track. Uh, you could actually see that. Uh, that water pooling across, uh, running across the track in turn two slash three as you switch back. And he went in here, he was able to move the car though. He does have some rear end damage, but it wasn't as bad. It was more of a rolly kind of hit. So uh, he might be okay. He might just need a uh, rear wing and stuff like that, which means he could start on the grid. Okay, what else do we have here? So Q1, we have Stroll Alonso, uh, Piastri, which I thought was crazy that he was that far down. Uh, he didn't put in the best lap at the very end there. Uh, he was really close. He was five tenths down for Norris, but then Norris was seven tenths up on everybody except for Russell at the end there. So Piastri didn't do well in his final lap. Uh, so Piastri, Elbon, Leclerc, 
Lawson, Akon, Sonona, Russell, and Norris. So um, the weird one out here is Albon because he crashed as well. So he potentially, and that was a huge crash. I would be surprised if Albon's in this race at all. So he's definitely going to be down. Science, I'm not sure. I don't know if they cut the car back. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Alonso looked like a pretty heavy crash, but it was a front end one. So he might be okay because that's a little bit easier to fix and you wouldn't need to go to the back of the grid potentially. So might only be Stroll. I uh, know it might only be Albon and Sainz be Oh, Sainz is already behind Verstappen, but not with his five place grid penalty. And then he would go to the back. So I, it's, it's just so many calculations there that you have to figure it out. Plus they're in order as well as the crash happened but it might only be when they submit their documents that they're going to change the gearbox which they won't know because they won't get until they get the car back to the grid uh, back to the pit wall it's going to be so hard to figure out uh we, i think it's one of those ones we'll just show up and know this was what's this oh that was just before the red flag uh no that was in q2 when verstappen went out we don't care about that here is alonzo's crash uh in q3 again very front end Lost the whole front wheel though, so you never know. Might be some tub damage or something there. And the last one is Elbon. You can see the back end of this car completely destroyed, like absolutely murdered. Uh, there was nothing left of the rear end of that car. Uh, plus the front end's all messed up too. The steering wheel doesn't turn that far normally, so <laughs> you can't hit your own front wing with your front wheel. So that car I think is completely done. It looks like his floor is mashed up as well. So I don't suspect that he will start at all. I mentioned all the cars stuck on track. There was many of them. Um, both Williams out though is a very, very big deal. Not because of this particular race. I'm sure they'll be disappointed to not uh, perform in Brazil. But the biggest thing is, and I have it as notes on my paper, you see all the money symbols. Money, money, money. They don't have any left. Not only that, but they don't have the money to make more parts of the car. You remember at the first of the year, they gave Sargent's car to Albon. That particular situation hasn't disappeared. They fired a, a sergeant because he had crashed. And they did that because really they can't afford any more crashes. And they have both cars with significant damage. Uh, it is going to be bad for them. I think this is the thing that I have yeah, from Reddit. So this is this is kind of what you're looking at. The total cost of the car, $20 million. Usually the engine isn't damaged, but you can see the rear end of this thing is going gearbox is going to be three quarters or maybe a million dollars. A million dollars worth of damage minimum for Albon's. Uh, Calapinto seemed like it was a bit slower, but it was most of the right side of his car. So again, you're gonna look. If he cracked a chassis, it's an it's another million dollars. It's something that they can't afford to have happen. Uh, this point of the year. They're really looking for that money from Constructors Championship, which they are actually in a fight for. Uh, and with RB so far up now, chances are they're going to get some points off of uh, for sixth place. So crazy, crazy stuff happening there. So yeah, the biggest thing though is the fight between Norris and Verstappen. If, if not too many people start from the pit lane, Verstappen is going to start in a terrible spot. And we saw this is going to be his biggest issue though is this spray getting by people is fine but if they can't see you coming you have to be careful and he doesn't have the ability well, he has the ability obviously he's a max for happened but he doesn't have the extra knowingness that he can just send it he's not in second place norris is gonna fucking send it no matter what happens he has nothing to lose there's no being careful with him he's gonna come second and if he doesn't come se if he doesn't come first who cares? Send it. But Verstappen is trying to be careful. He has to be careful going by these people. And this grid that he's looking at is not normal. The people he's going to be going by are in positions that they don't want to give up. Lawson, Ocon, and Sonona, and Russell are not going to let him by. And Leclerc is there. He's going to have uh, Botas ahead of him, who is good around here, but it's a difficult place to pass in the rain because it's dangerous um if we see Verstappen go out that's 25 points to Norris if he finishes first that would reduce the gap down to a single DNF which is danger range for Verstappen it's going this is this is going to be the best race if you're not watching this race you're not a Formula One fan because it's going to be absolutely amazing subscribe if you're new throw me a like if you got a second and I'll see you guys after the race